Hey guys, Mike here. In this video, we're going to talk about how to restore and reseal your concrete countertop. I'll also tell you how often you should reseal your concrete countertop. All right, so you got some concrete countertops and they don't look very good. You think it's time to reseal them or restore them. What you got to do is you got to remove that sealer if it's in really, really bad shape. Now, if it's not in that bad of shape, you could probably just lightly sand it with a palm sander and like 200 grit sandpaper. But if it's like these right here, really nasty looking, then you got to remove the sealer and then reseal it with some brand new sealer. So we'll talk about what we're going to use for sealer later in the video. But right now what Darren and I are doing is we're just taking some 4 inch hand grinders and we're using some buffing, some diamond buffing pads and we're trying to figure out like what grit works best for this type of sealer that was on this countertop. So we got four or five different kinds we've been trying out from more aggressive to less aggressive diamonds and sometimes it'll take you a little bit to figure out just which ones are going to work best. So. We finally figured out which ones we think we want to use. Darren's using a little bit more aggressive diamond uh, disc than I am. And then I'm coming behind him to, to take off anything he doesn't get with the one I'm using. So, you know, we've done quite a few countertops over the years. They're all different. Um, brand new ones obviously are easier to seal. This was a big island countertop we got hired to do. I don't know. I can't remember how many feet long this thing was. It was like... 12 13 feet long three feet wide two inches thick but it came out absolutely beautiful they wanted to expose some of the aggregate in it they wanted black concrete to match their kitchen and the other countertops they had in the kitchen so this was another one we did at a pub at a bar we poured it you know we formed it and poured it right on site finished it right there and then sealed it up and this one came out really good too so the refinishing type process that I'm going to show you in this video would be the same for these types of countertops too. Um, it just It's going to take a little bit of time, a little bit of elbow grease, but they're going to look brand new again when you're done. Here's another one we did at a another bar top type thing. And this was a pretty, this one was three inches thick. We poured it right in place and then they just wanted plain old looking, you know, like, like um, plain old looking concrete. Nothing special to the color with just a, a sealed, smooth finish on it to make it easy to clean, easy to maintain. And here's one done in a residential house. We did, you know, the island and the back part of it, and we just wanted them black. So what Darren and I are doing here is we're removing the old finish. We didn't actually pour these countertops. Somebody else did years ago, but they haven't been refinished or resealed in a really long time. And they're kind of... They kind of have a leather tan type look to them, a color to them, but you couldn't tell by looking at the old part. You can see where we've started to remove some of the old finish, how clean it's starting to look. And, you know, I'll show you in a minute how we check, how we check for like scratches or pits or anything like that. The, the key with using like a diamond disc like this is you got to be really, really careful going over the surface because it's pretty easy to... To dig into the concrete because they're pretty aggressive so you got to hold that thing really really flat we have vacuums hooked up to these too so they are going to be a little dusty if you don't have vacuums but Darren's actually using an electric one and I'm using a battery powered one well you can start to see what it's going to look like after you start removing some of that finish now that finish had been on there for years and years and I'm in the background there, I'm just checking it. I got a little bit of water with a rag and I'm wiping it down. And that's going to tell me what it's going to look like after we seal it by just checking it with a, you know, a wet rag, wiping off some of the dust. And you can see how dark and kind of leathery tan that looks in color. And that's what the finish, the seal is going to look like after we're done. But we got, you know, we got our work cut out for us right now just removing this sealer. If you have the right tools, if you have the right diamond disc, you know, this isn't too bad of a process. If you're kind of handy with a grinder, if you've used grinders before, it's not going to be too, too bad. 
you can see the bottom counters on this had like a wood uh, edging to them and the top ones didn't so we're gonna have to remove the finish on the edges on the top piece right now Darren is just kinda carefully just going back and forth removing just we're just removing the sealer on the surface getting it down to bare concrete you know we don't want to create any more damage to the concrete there you can see I'm removing that edge now I've got a little bit different diamond disc for that it's a little bit I don't wanna I don't wanna create any any big scratches or any ripples or anything like that in the concrete so I'm using more of a resin type disc for the edges and then for getting up really close to the backsplash you can see I had to take the shroud off of that so I can get right up close to it so I put the vacuum the end of the vacuum right close to me to try to suck up as much of the dust as I possibly could without making too much of a mess the good thing about you know what we're doing right here in this setting is they were kind of remodeling the whole room so the whole room was kind of torn apart and under construction so getting a little dust on something wasn't really going to be that big of a deal you know if you're doing this in your house you're going to want to probably poly everything off that you don't want to get dust on and definitely have uh, you know a HEPA vacuum hookup you can rent those and just try to keep the dust down as much as possible but you can see how Darren and I are just moving right along now how often should you reseal a concrete countertop well that's kind of kind of kind of depend on the the type of use and abuse you give it you know if it's start if it's starting to show some wear then maybe it might be every one to three years you want to reseal your countertop and if if you get it if you catch it before it gets too bad like this like I said just a palm sander 200 grit sandpaper just sand it down really good create some scratches and then go over it with the new sealer and you, do you have to reseal do you I mean do you have to seal your countertops to begin with well you kind of do you kind of have to keep because they real concrete's really porous you know you want you don't want the water to penetrate through the concrete you don't want food stains to get in the concrete stuff like that so really you know you, number one they should be sealed when you first have them done and then you're probably going to want to think about resealing them every one to three years just to keep them looking brand new again and not not letting them get quite this bad <laughs> but if you do have to remove the old sealer this is going to be the process right here you're going to kind of have to lightly grind it off and this is going to be the best method for that now, I'm going to show you here in a minute just how we're going to reseal it and I'll tell you what we're going to use to reseal it with you know we've got a really good durable sealer we're going to put back on this so it'll keep the amount of time that we have to reseal it you know it'll keep us from having to do that every every year we could probably work that out to two or three years so after we get after we get it ground we got to get all the dust off it I'm gonna vacuum it down probably twice and then I'll take some denatured alcohol on a just a regular white cloth rag and I'll wipe all the dust off and then we're gonna relook at it and see if there's any other places that we need to remove any more sealer which is what Darren's doing and I'm gonna show you right here I'm double checking so water with a rag the water's gonna evaporate really fast but you can see how that looks and I'm making sure that number one all the sealers off and that there's no scratches left in the surface from those diamond discs we were using so once we got that done we can just tape off anything we don't want to get any of the new sealer on and in this case you know we got to tape all those those wood uh, edgings and then now now Darren's kind of mixing up the sealer so we're using a one-to-one -one polyaspartic food safe type of sealer I'll have a link for this down in the description below so basically we just he's probably mixing up a quart of part A and a quart of part B giving us about a half a gallon of product polyaspartics um, they got so they have a pretty good pot life in them so you can keep them in the bucket for a little bit but you'll see right here I'm gonna squeegee this out without trying to get it dripping over the edges and then Darren's gonna come back behind me and, and roll it out and you can see you can see how that darkens it and that's gonna be the color of it when we're done when this stuff dries it's gonna dry to that color I will end up putting two coats of this on I'm gonna just show you the first coat here but we'll roll this on uh, get it as even as possible you know try to get the coating probably about 
10 mils thick so it'll it'll kind of self level itself out a little bit we'll use a little bit bigger roller you can see the bigger roller the 18 inch roller we got for the wider part and we'll let this cure out this is going to cure out in about two hours then we can just lightly sand it and put the second coat on and then that's gonna that's basically going to be it but the process of putting this stuff on is you know you don't want to mix up too much it's going to go pretty far and you want to just keep moving right along as you as you put the sealer on and then you want to cover anything you don't want to get the sealer on you want to plastic it off like i said here we were pretty lucky because everything was under construction but if you're doing this in your kitchen or in your bathroom or something like that you know make sure you plastic the floor off and anything else you don't want to get sealer dripped on now this one-to-one -one polyaspartic is is really durable it's really scratch proof it's going to hold up really well um, you're still going to want to put a cutting board down if you're going to cut on it you're going to want to put um, pads down under any hot pans or frying pans like that you're not going to want to set just hot pans right on the counter just as a good practice but you can see how nice that's really looking I'm kind of cutting in the edges and using the little edge roller then Darren's coming behind me with the 18 inch and just kind of making sure everything is spread out and it looks really really even and we don't want to leave any roller lines in this that's going to somewhat self level like I said but I'll leave a link in the description to the polyaspartic that we're using that you can use that's food safe and that's going to last a really long time and that's easy to refinish too to refinish this like I said you're going to just lightly sand it if you want to put a light coat on every year you just lightly sand over it buff it up and then you just recoat it real quick so again guys you got any questions leave them down in the comments thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one